All right, so I've been asked to uh, make a video and kind of start from the beginning about setting up mining computers. And there's four main ways that you can mine cryptocurrency. Uh, the first of which is like Bitcoin mining and Litecoin mining, which use ASICs, which are uh, dedicated machines that are just used for mining. The second way is with graphics cards. So I'm sure many of you have already done some reading and found out that you can use regular desktop graphics cards to mine cryptocurrency. The third way is with your computer's processor, your CPU, which is very similar to GPU or graphics card mining. And the last way is actually with your hard drive space. Uh, so coins like Burstcoin uh, rely on the space of your hard drives, and that's the last way. What I'm going to focus on in the series of videos I'm going to do now is graphics cards. And the reason for that is these have the fastest ROI, and they also are the least risky because if crypto, the cryptocurrency that you're mining goes belly up, you still have a bunch of assets that you can go ahead and sell, even if it's at a reduced price. Things like ASICs, uh, they're only meant for one thing, so you can't resell them if the, if the currency So how do I actually up? start mining with my computer's graphics card? Well, if you don't already have a computer like my gaming computer over there, or or this, this monster over here that's got 12 GTX graphics cards on it, you're going to need a parts list that helps you get into uh, actually building a system. And there's eight main things that you need to build one of these systems. The first of which is your motherboard. It's what everything in the computer plugs into. The second is your computer's processor, your CPU. Uh, and then your third is the heat sink for the CPU. So essentially what those components are, you've got your motherboard that, that you plug everything into, your processor processes all of the uh, all of the different things that your normal operating system does, and then your heat sink keeps the processor cool as your, uh, as your system runs. Next thing is your memory, uh, also, also known as uh, RAM or random access memory. Uh, and for, for most systems that are mining computers, you'll, you'll only need two or four gigabytes. You, you won't need a whole lot uh, of memory. Uh, and then you'll need power supplies. So depending on the number of graphics cards that you have, that'll determine how many power supplies you need. Now, if you take a system like I've got over here running in the corner, this one actually uses two different power supplies. One is a server class power supply powering eight of these cards. Uh, the other is a normal desktop power supply, uh, which powers the remainder of the cards as well as the motherboard and, and all the other components. So I'll, I'll get deeper into a parts list and, and put that in the description so you can see what that looks like. And then the last two things you need are obviously your graphics cards, which is going to depend on how many of these things you want to set up, and then your case or, or some sort of stand. Uh, you'll have two different options with the case. You can either do a computer case, like I've got my, my main machine in, uh, or you can do something like this, which is more of a dedicated uh, case. Now, uh, I'll put a link in the description for one that's a very inexpensive solution uh, that I like to use. It's about 30 bucks. It's a stackable shoe case, um, and, and you can use it uh, to keep your cards cool, hangs very well, and is very sturdy. Uh, for the graphics cards, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're only using one card to start your build off with. Um, and, and we'll go from there. But those are the eight main components that you need to actually build. All right, I just went through all the eight different components that you're going to need to start building your own mining rig. Uh, and I want to spend a little time talking about each of these things. So the first thing that I put up on this list was the motherboard. So what does that mean? There's thousands of different motherboards out there. Well, um, the, the, the ones that I like to use for mining are the ones that are actually specifically designed to be mining computers. And there's a couple different reasons for that. Uh, the main one being that you can add a bunch of different cards to one of these boards and maintain stability. You can use any, any computer uh, motherboard that's got PCI Express slots um, for, for your mining machine. Uh, but I'll put a link to this in the description with the one that I like to use. Uh, it's the Biostar TB350. It is an AMD-based motherboard, uh, but it can be had for about 90 bucks on Amazon or Newegg. Um, and then the, the processor that I put in that is a, a Phenom 950. And, uh, it's a quad-core processor that only costs 60 bucks. It includes the heatsink fan. So between the motherboard and the processor, uh, you're spending about $150 with a heatsink. Now, the main things you need to look at if you're not going to go with my specified build list are a motherboard that includes PCI Express slots or PCIe slots, and that needs to match however many graphics cards you're putting into your build. So if it has six PCI Express slots, like the one that I'm recommending, you can put up to six graphics cards into the motherboard. If you have a motherboard like this H110 BTC over here, uh, this one can actually support 13 graphics cards. Uh, and I've got 12 of the slots filled right now with GTX 1060, uh, GTX 1060 NVIDIA cards. Um, 
So motherboard and processor about $150. Um, before you guys start going and, and buying these components, I, I think it's uh, worth it to mention that one of these builds, your first one, is probably going to take you all day. Uh, so I would make sure that you budget a significant amount of time for the build process and then secondary, secondarily uh, the actual configuration of your machine. So if you expect to spend you know, the, the 30 minutes or so that this video takes building it, I think you should budget a little bit more time than that, especially if it's your first machine. So into the rest of the parts. For the memory, as I've mentioned, the RAM just has to match whatever the motherboard you have is. If you use this TB350 like I've recommended, you'll need DDR4 memory. The speed does not matter on one of these mining computers. So you can go ahead and get 2133 megahertz RAM. Uh, RAM. Uh, and one of these sticks will probably cost you about 30 to 35 bucks. So between the motherboard and processor, you're spending about 150 bucks. For the memory, I think you can get it for around 30 to 40 dollars. Uh, so you're still under 200 for kind of the main heart of your computer. Now you're going to need your power supply and graphics cards. Um, now these are going to be heavily dependent on how big of a machine you want to put together. Uh, my machine sitting over here on the right uh, actually has one graphics card, uses about 200 watts. You'll probably get away with something between a 4 and 500 watt power supply. Something like this over here, I've actually got a 1,000 watt power supply as the main component uh, uh, carrier, and then a 750 watt uh, external power supply. For the build list here, I'm actually going to recommend uh, one of these Roswell Glacier series power supplies. Uh, I've used six or seven of them in my builds so far. Uh, it, it is on the lower end of the cost spectrum, uh, but it is very reliable from my experience so far. Uh, it costs about $120 for a 1,000 watt power supply, and I currently run uh, several machines with six GTX 1070 cards on them. Uh, so it's got, it's got quite a bit of backbone for you uh, if you're going to expand later. In terms of the graphics cards, now these graphics cards from an MSRP standpoint um, range anywhere from $150 to $700. Uh, with, with a lot of people getting into mining right now, you can expect to pay probably 10 to 30 percent over MSRP for any of the cards that you buy. And the main ones you're going to want to focus on are the GTX 10 series with 4 gigabytes of VRAM or more, or the RX AMD series from the 4 series, 47480, up to the new Vega ones. So 47480, 57580, and Vega 56 and Vega 64. Um, any of these GTX 10 series cards or uh, RX series cards are going to do you very well on many different altcoins, um, as well as uh, you know any, any, any gaming or, or stuff you want to dual purpose your machine for. So th these graphics cards, uh, Let's, let's call it $200 per card. Uh, for this system with one graphics card, you're looking at $150 for the CPU and memory, maybe $50 for the, for the memory itself, um, the power supply $120, uh, and then graphics card $200. If you use a shoe rack like I do for the case, uh, that's, that's another $30. Um, so that, that gives you your kind of total build cost um, with one graphics card. If you spend $200 on a graphics card, uh, you can expect it to make you between $2 and $3 per day with current exchange rates, uh, and you can extrapolate from there what, what it will cost you. Uh, my current uh, mining farm setup, I've got probably about 12 machines right now. Uh, I make, um, or I, re total revenue is around $4,000, $4,500. And then the power bill is about $700 a month. So to give you an idea of kind of uh, what this could become if you get into it, uh, that's, that's where I currently am right now. Uh, and I'll give you guys a detailed video on how to put one of these things together. Okay, I just want to share a couple more things in this video before I point you guys towards the actual build video. Uh, so far we've got a machine, and I'm going to assume that you go out and buy an RX 570 for, for $200. Um, that that built to your machine for about $540. Uh, and at current prices, it uh, looks like you can mine Z Classic here for, for about $282 per day, uh, yielding you return on investment at 191 days or a little over six months. I want to go through the main sites that I use to kind of uh, manage prices and, and take a look at where I point my farm. Uh, the first of which over here is Coinbase. Uh, this is a site that you can trade Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin on. Uh, it's very easy to use. You can uh, buy through your bank account, buy through credit cards. Uh, it'll give you different secure addresses for you to send your funds. And then it has a vault feature uh, for you to lock, lock your crypto down and, and, and keep it very safe. 
Uh, I'll also include a link in the description, a referral code, uh, which if you guys do go ahead and decide to make a Coinbase account, it'll give you 10 free bucks if you buy 100 bucks of Bitcoin. Um, and both of us will get the 10 bucks. Uh, and so that's the first thing that I use. Second thing I use is Bittrex. So Coinbase obviously only has four different cryptos that you can buy on here, so it's kind of locked down. Super easy to use for what it is, and it does help you sell your crypto after you've mined it. Uh, but if you need to trade amongst m many different altcoins, uh, such as uh, Verge, Ripple, um, and any of these other ones that aren't on Coinbase, you need an exchange like Bittrex. I've had really good luck with Bittrex. The website is kind of hard to use um, when you first get started, so uh, I think that's a kind of turnoff for, for, for many uh, new guys getting into this. Um, but that's, that's the one that I use, highly recommend it. Uh, once you get through the learning curve, it's very easy to use. Essentially what it lets you do is it lets you trade amongst all the different altcoins to Bitcoin and to Ethereum. Uh, so of any of the 1,100 diff different cryptocurrencies, you can trade to those two, push them over to your Coinbase account, sell them, and get the money into your bank account within a couple of days. Uh, I think uh, last week I sold uh, a few thousand of crypto on Friday and got the money in my account on Saturday. So it was, it was very, very fast. The last, uh, the last website that I, I want to highlight is whattomine.com. This website will let you plug in the different graphics cards that you have, highlight them, and then you click calculate and it tells you which coin you should mine to be the most profitable. So if you have one 570, just put in one, click it, 570, calculate. If your electricity cost is more than 11 cents, make sure you put that in here. And right now, since, since I've been recording this video, uh, Z Classic has, been, has gone down in profitability 5 cents, and the most uh, profitable one, one right now is Pearl. So this gives you a really, uh, really good real-time way to track what the best thing for you to mine is. And when, when I make the software video, I'll kind of teach you guys how to, how to change what you're mining and what that looks like. Uh, but this, this is a really good snapshot, and I'll go ahead here uh, and put in this machine. So I've got 12 1060s, and then I've got another machine sitting over on the other side with six 1070s, and then that one has one 570 in it. Go ahead and calculate, and it's going to tell me, oh, hey, Max, you need to go ahead and mine Verge right now, and if you don't have Verge set up, go ahead and mine Z Classic. And that's actually what I have, have all these things mining right now for you know, 60, 66 and change a day. So I use these three websites mainly um, outside of what I actually use to manage my mining pool. Uh, so I think those, if you're looking to get into cryptocurrency, go ahead and set yourself up with accounts on each of these. Um, and then I'll give you guys some links for you to check out how you actually shop for these different components um, and give you some alternatives in the description as well. All right, so one more thing I gotta talk to you guys about. So uh, this machine over here, so this is 12 graphics cards. Each of these are using about 100 watts each. Um, it, it, obviously, you guys can't feel temperature through the camera, uh, but uh, this thing puts out a lot of heat. And I, I've seen a lot of guys say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a bunch of computers and I'm gonna sit them in one little room. If you do that without a lot of really good cooling, the room is gonna get very hot. Uh, we've got a, a 1,000 square foot apartment that I've got 12 of these machines in. It's uh, generally between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit here in Seattle. With all the windows open and the AC on, that apartment stays at 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So these things make a lot of heat. So plan for that. Make sure that you guys look at how much power one of these is going to consume. For this one, it's about 1,500 watts. So I need to make sure that this is on its own 15 amp circuit in the house. Uh, and then you need to find a way to dissipate the heat. Now with this room, I've got wide double doors, the airflow goes very nicely, uh, and I actually have these underclocked a little bit to save on the heat. Uh, but keep that in mind as you guys are building. As you get into two, three, four cards, they're going to put off a lot of heat. You want to make sure that you have a good way to manage that. The best way that I've found is to go pick up some cheap box fans, strap them to the side, and just push the air through. Um, you, you don't have to go buy fancy air conditioning, you don't have to go buy fancy Bornado fans, just cheap Walmart box fans are, are what you need. Uh, and you just put them next to the cards and it'll keep them nice and cool. Um, and you can also turn the fan speeds up on each of the individual cards as well. I generally run mine at around 70 to 80 percent on all of the cards, so um, just to give you a baseline of, of how I set mine up. Uh, last thing uh, for you guys. All of the links that I've got in my description are to my specific Amazon account. 
Um, just uh, full disclosure, if you guys use my links, I do get an affiliate uh, kind of small percentage out of that. I really appreciate it. So if you can use my links, again, really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and keep an eye out for my next build videos. Thanks.